I'm very happy to have the chance to speak with you today via Zoom. This is a new experience for me, as I'm sure it is for many of you. The epigraphic survey is the Oriental Institute's permanent field expedition in Luxor, Egypt. Uh, we are based at Chicago House, which is the University of Chicago's field research facility in Luxor. And we have been working in Egypt, uh, undertaking our documentation and conservation work since 1924. Uh, I'm going to point out with my mouse, if you can see the, the pointer there, this is Luxor, located in Upper Egypt. Uh, it is the southern capital of ancient Egypt and is home to the greatest concentration of ancient Egyptian monumental structures, both standing and fragmentary structures uh, within Egypt. And so it's an important ancient center. And this is the reason that James Henry Breasted uh, selected this area for a permanent field expedition in order to record the uh, inscribed material from ancient Egypt. Now our core mission is to uh, record and to publish the inscribed records of ancient Egypt at a very high level of quality and accuracy. Uh, Professor Breasted devised an uh, innovative method uh, for us to do this, uh, and we have been continuing with that core mission uh, now for 96 years. Uh, we're very happy to be celebrating the Oriental Institute centennial this past year, but in 2024, the epigraphic survey will celebrate our centennial. So we are approaching 100 years of field work in Egypt. So what I'd like to do is take you through some of our current activities. Uh, including not only epigraphic documentation and publication, uh, but also conservation of the monuments, physical conservation of the monuments to make sure that they are preserved for the future, uh, our conservation training programs for uh, local Egyptian conservation students, and also an extensive program of physical restoration of the monuments. We are working right now at a variety of sites in the area of Luxor. Those of you who are familiar with Luxor, who visited uh, Luxor and its monuments, uh, will be able to visualize some of these places. Uh, here's the main town of Luxor, the Nile uh, flowing uh, through the city. And our main uh, work sites at the moment are the Temple of Luxor, which is located in the core of the modern city. Uh, we are also working at the site of Medinet Habu, the mortuary complex of Ramses III. And we're working at a small tomb in the Theban necropolis, TT107, which is located in this area right here. Um, now we also have a concession for work at the temple of Khonsu in Karnak. Uh, we worked at the, at the Khonsu temple for many years. Uh, but because of the, um, the limitations of our staff and personnel, we have not done any work in the Khonsu complex over the past couple of years. Luxor Temple, uh, which is located on the east bank of the Nile, again, uh, in the heart of the modern city of Luxor, is a vast complex. It contains a uh, major monument dating to the time of Amenhotep III, uh, the inner chambers, the great sun court and the colonnade hall. Uh, and then there are extensive later additions made primarily during the reign of Ramses II, but also during a number of later periods. Now, the epigraphic survey has been working at Luxor Temple since the 1970s, as many of you know. Uh, we have published two major volumes containing the reliefs and inscriptions in the Colonnade Hall. Uh, and we have an ongoing documentation program here at Luxor Temple, both for the standing wall surfaces, documentation of the inscriptions on the standing walls, as well as within the extensive fragment yards, the fragment storage areas. And if you look at the uh, aerial shot of Luxor Temple here, you can see how the main temple axis goes from north to south, again, within the heart of the modern city. 
uh, and you see off to the side rows and rows and rows of fragments. Uh, you know, we are responsible for the documentation, both of Amenhotep III's standing monument, uh, as well as for the fragmentary material. Now this fragmentary material was recovered uh, throughout the 19th and 20th centuries. It is fragmentary material that was used by the medieval population of Luxor for building material. They constructed their houses and other structures, churches, mosques out of this building material. Uh, but these are fragments that were taken from dismantled pharaonic monuments for later reuse. So over the years, this material has been recovered and um, it's one of the major achievements of uh, the epigraphic survey over the last few decades to have collected this material together uh, to cre have created a safe storage platform so that the material is properly stored above ground and it's not subject to uh, water infiltration. Uh, and now we are at the stage of doing conservation of the fragmentary material as well as cataloging, processing, numbering, and making sure that this material is properly recorded, ultimately with the goal of uh, facsimile documentation and publication of various parts of the fragment corpus. Um, so in order to do this, uh, we have a database that we're using to record all of the material. This was initiated five or six years ago. Uh, now we have over 50,000 fragments stored within the Luxor Temple complex, stored in various areas around the temple. So you can imagine that the process of cataloging and recording this material uh, is going to take some time. Uh, up to this time, we have cataloged about 15,000 uh, of the total fragment corpus. It starts with uh, basically assigning a number to each fragment. Uh, each fragment gets, uh, gets photographed, uh, it receives an entry in the database with basic data about the fragment. Uh, and as we proceed through the fragments, what this is doing is building a searchable corpus that will aid us not only with tracking the material, but also with keeping track of it for conservation, condition survey, as well as analysis that allows us to rejoin fragment groups. Now the, the analysis and the joining of fragment groups is a really important part of what we do uh, because this fragment corpus is like a gigantic three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle. Uh, imagine a million piece 3D jigsaw puzzle with 90% of the pieces missing. Uh, and that's essentially what we are looking at. Uh, but over, uh, over several decades, uh, primarily as a result of work by our field director, Ray Johnson, who has really pioneered the art of putting together these fragment groups, uh, it has been possible to analyze and pull together a number of groups that allow us to reconstruct uh, entire monuments or parts of monuments which no longer exist, which only exist in this fragmentary form. Uh, so now that we have modern database software, it actually helps a lot with this process because the various data, the various criteria by which we uh, identify the fragments can be sorted using the computer. Uh, and that can really speed up the process of analysis uh, and study of this material for uh, either virtual or in some cases, a physical reassembly uh, of the fragmentary monuments. Now, um, in recent years, new technology has become available that allows us to record this material in a more precise way. Uh, in 2016, we initiated our Luxor Temple Blockyard of Photogrammetric Documentation Project. We are using a process known as 3D photogrammetry. Uh, to create orthorectified digital images, which are distortion free. Um, now the initial focus of this survey are the Luxor Temple Talatat. We have about 6,000 Talatat blocks from the time of Akhenaten, primarily from the Karnak area, uh, which are stored in the Luxor Temple complex. So since this was a discrete uh, part of the corpus and since it's um, from a time period that is of very great interest, 
uh, we decided to focus on this material first for our experimental photogrammetry program. And this program has turned out to be very successful. Um, primarily, uh, the method has been devised uh, by Hillary McDonald. Uh, you can see here with our data engineer, Gina Slama, undertaking the initial photographic documentation. Uh, this is based on digital photography done in the field with a series of targets uh, that are applied to the surface of the blocks. This allows uh, several photographs to be taken of each block. Uh, we use a computer software which takes the multiple digital photographs and uh, creates a digital mosaic. It's actually a three-dimensional mosaic of the surface of the inscribed block. This is used to create a three-dimensional model moving from the sparse cloud to the dense data cloud. Uh, and this is a hyper-accurate three-dimensional model of the surface. It can then be used to skin over a final high-quality digital photograph onto the three-dimensional surface. If you flatten it out, what you have is an orthorectified image of the inscribed surface. That's a distortion-free image of the surface. Uh, we eliminate the problem of, of distortion in the camera using this method. And this is a method that can be used to record a fairly large number of blocks in a fairly short time. We are able to record 40 or 50 blocks per day in the field. Uh, there's a lot of data processing that goes on back in this, uh, some of which is undertaken in the field and some, some of which is done over the summer. But the result is that over the past four field seasons, we have been able to complete the documentation of all 6,000 Amarna Talatat in the fragment corpus of Luxor Temple. We actually just completed the final shots uh, this past winter uh, during our 2019-2020 field season. So we're very happy to have reached this milestone. Um, now 6,000 out of 50,000 is, uh, is not a huge chunk, but it's a good start. Uh, and we have had the chance over the past couple of years to develop and perfect this method. We are now moving on to other fragment groups within the Luxor Temple corpus. Uh, throughout the uh, throughout the block heritage storage area. So we're going to be continuing as we catalog the material. We will be coming along behind um, with the digital camera to continue the orthophotographic documentation of this material. The goal is to create a highly accurate archive, uh, block by block, so that when we do our analysis, we have the information that we need for study and reconstruction and publication of the material in the future. Uh, now, there are a number of interesting fragment groups that we've been working on, in addition to the Amarna Talatat. One that we spent a lot of time on recently is uh, the Luxor Temple copy of the famous Bentresh text. This is a second copy of the text that is known from the, the famous Louvre Stila, containing the legend of the princess uh, Bentresh, uh, in the time of Ramses III. It's a text that was actually composed during the Ptolemaic period, and the existence of the Luxor Temple fragmentary copy was first noticed by Lanny Bell back in the 1970s. Uh, in recent years, Professor Rittner here at the Oriental Institute has studied this material. He was able to create a preliminary reconstruction, uh, as you can see here, and we are uh, basing our facsimile documentation of these blocks on the work that Professor Rittner has done. Uh, I'm pleased to say that the uh, drawings of these fragments were completed uh, during the last couple of seasons, and we have now completed the field study and analysis of them as well. So those drawings are going to be finalized. Uh, and the goal, of course, as, as, as with, uh, with all of our work, is to produce a publication of this uh, very interesting and very unique group of material. And this is a very small group, it's only 39 blocks, but it's just an example of the type of material which you can find in the Luxor Temple Fragment Corpus and why it is important to study and to record and to conserve it uh, at such a high level of quality. 
Now, I mentioned conservation, uh, and I'll come back to that in a moment, but I want to move on to the recording of the standing wall remains as well, because this is part of our responsibility for documentation of the temple site. As I mentioned earlier, we have completed two volumes on the Luxor Temple Colonnade Hall. We have moved on to the next stage of our facsimile recording program uh, with work on this chamber that you see here. In the time of Amenhotep III, this was the first hypostyle hall of Luxor Temple. Uh, but it has a rather curious history. During the late Roman period in the third century AD, Luxor Temple was uh, converted into a Roman legionary encampment. And this central chamber was modified. Uh, it was rebuilt in the Greco-Roman style. You can see the apse and the two Corinthian columns there at the back. Uh, this chamber was turned into a cult chamber for uh, the cult of the de deified Roman emperors. And of course, at this time, there were four emperors in the time of Diocletian, the four tetrarchs. And the walls were covered with uh, fresco paintings in the late Roman style, showing the four emperors, the four tetrarchs, along with the imperial court and the imperial entourage. These fresco paintings are almost unique in terms of the level of preservation, uh, what remains from this time period. They are also a type of material that the epigraphic survey had never attempted to record before. Our method, as it was devised by Breasted in the 1920s, was specifically designed to record inscribed pharaonic wall relief. So in order to be able to record a different type of material, the late Roman fresco paintings, it was necessary to devise a new method. And our artist, uh, Christian Vertesch, has now spent a number of seasons devising and perfecting a method for recording uh, this painted wall material. Uh, we have created, of course, uh, complete photographic documentation, both film and digital photographic documentation of the frescoes. We worked with the American Research Center in Egypt uh, in 2007-2008 on a project for cleaning the frescoes. We have very good photographic documentation. But in order to present the material in an optimum fashion, it's necessary to have high quality facsimile drawings as well. So uh, Christian has developed a method based on Adobe Photoshop to create a series of layered drawings in which the various phases can be depicted. As you see here, we have many, many instances where the third century AD Roman frescoes lay over the underlying 18th dynasty, Amenhotep III period relief carving. Uh, by creating a series of layered digital drawings in Adobe Photoshop, it allows this material to be presented in a variety of different ways. And this has proven to be a very effective method for recording and for illustrating this material. You can see here uh, the documentation in the field being undertaken on a portable tablet. And this method has, has been under development for the past six or seven field seasons. It's now reached a very high level of development and is being used uh, to record all of the uh, not only all of the Roman fresco paintings, but also the underlying pharaonic relief carving. And it's proven to be a very, very accurate uh, way of presenting the material. And I'll give you an example of what the final product looks like here. Uh, on the left of the screen, you see a uh, very high quality color photograph made by Yarko Kobolecki, our head photographer. And then on the right, you see the hyper accurate facsimile drawing of the Roman fresco paintings juxtaposed with the underlying 18th dynasty relief. And this uh, material is going to form the, the basis for the third volume in our uh, Reliefs and Inscriptions at Luxor Temple series. This is now in preparation. 
Um, now, if you would like to know more about the, the technical details of the method that has been used to record this material, we now have a website, digitalopigraphy.com, where you can go and, and learn about this methodology in detail. It contains a lot of information about the methods that are being developed and employed in the field, uh, as well as a lot of other news about the project. So definitely take a look at that. This has been one of the major focal points of our documentation program at Luxor Temple uh, during the past couple of seasons as we bring the recording of the Roman fresco paint, paintings to conclusion and get the publication ready for press. Now, over the last two field seasons, we have initiated documentation in the next room of the interior of the temple. Luxor Temple, is, as, as those of you who have visited uh, it are, are aware, a large number of the interior chambers are very well preserved. Uh, so we have moved our documentation into the second hypostyle hall, which is a four column hypostyle hall. The columns and the roof are intact contains a very large number of quite well-preserved scenes showing Amenhotep III during the Opet Festival procession, uh, presenting offerings to the various gods within the context of the temple. So we have continued our documentation program in this chamber, beginning with digital photography. You can see our photographer, Owen Murray, uh, here creating the digital ortho photo mosaics that will be used to create uh, the photographic backgrounds for the facsimile drawings. And then artist Jay Heidel is in the process of making the drawings on the portable tablet uh, on site using the Adobe Photoshop software. Um, now, at this point, uh, at the end of our 2019-2020 season, a number of the drawings have been completed and we have begun the process of uh, field checks or collations of this material as well. Uh, it's a big chamber, it's got a huge quantity of wall reliefs, uh, but we are well begun in terms of recording this material and getting it ready for publication as well. For over 100 years, the OI has been a leading research center for the study of ancient Middle Eastern civilizations. Join us in uncovering the past and learn about the beginnings of our lives as humans together. Become a member by visiting oi.uchicago.edu member.